guys, it's Geekonomics here. So my students have just been around having sat the AS level macroeconomics papers. So what did they make of it? Well, let's start with the multiple choice. They thought the multiple choice was rather tricky dicky. Um, a few little difficult questions in there. Um, and one or two calculations, which thankfully I had spotted and uh, predicted and tweeted out at the weekend. Those of you who follow uh, my Twitter feed will know that I did mention specifically, for example, terms of trade. So it was nice to see a question on terms of trade and the index and so on. The multiplier was on there as well. So hopefully that's gone well, although I do believe the sort of sentiments uh, from my students was that it was a little bit harder maybe than last year's paper, but time will tell. With regard to the main uh, data questions, now I haven't actually seen the paper, it'll be tomorrow before I get a good look at it, but again, sort of the things which I said and tweeted about that might come up. So we had, for example, trade and the current count. We had exchange rates, being able to interpret whether a currency is appreciating or depreciating. Uh, we had unemployment. And then we had, um, I think my students found it quite difficult, um, a tricky little question because it wasn't in its standard form normally when we're talking about inflation for example we're getting a question which says point out to us the, the dangers of rising inflation but this one stumped a few people I think maybe because the question was as far as I'm aware although I'll have to double check this but my students have made me aware that it was something to do with the fact that inflation rates are falling and what might be the advantages and disadvantages of such a, a scenario for a given country I think and then we come to the essays, of course. Now, uh, the essays, of course, ladies and gentlemen, I did, pr I did try and predict them last week. I said supply-side policies, I said monetary policy, um, I said trade and current count, and possibly one other, which I can't remember. But I did say I did not think that fiscal policy would appear. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this just shows you that GECO can get these things wrong as well, because fiscal policy was there. Lovely little question, actually, on fiscal policy. And uh, certainly in our lessons recently, we had done uh, and have done some questions on fiscal. And so my students, I think, found that one, uh, certainly of the two, the more attractive of the two questions. And they did opt for that one in uh, their numbers and in their droves compared to others. And then we have question 18, uh, which was, uh, it was on unemployment, I believe. Um, and again, quite a nice question remember exactly what the question was and again it'll be tomorrow before I see that but I think the the overwhelming thing about the essays was the focus on the other key macro objectives so not only did you have to analyze and discuss the impact of either uh, fiscal policy or unemployment but make sure that you talked about the macro objectives of inflation unemployment trade and economic growth so hopefully you've been able to do that so uh, I look forward to um, well, just to see the results from that, ladies and gentlemen, on the 24th, I believe, it is of August. So I hope your exams have gone well, and uh, hopefully you'll be back after half term, refreshed, rejuvenated, and ready to get stuck into a little bit of A-level economics. Massive amounts to be covered. Uh, it really does take a long time to get through it, so we'll be getting hitting the ground running. Bye for now. <laughs>